Okay, so I just wanted to give uh, an update on what happened over the past year and our plans for the next year as well. Um, so to start, last year, I'll just get right into it. Uh, so last year, um, I went on stage to give a keynote and I complained for like five minutes about how our code base was not scalable, um, how like it, was very, it made it very difficult for developers to write their own backends. Um, and it also made it very difficult for developers to contribute to Triton. Uh, and this is something I think we've made a lot of progress on. So if you look at the state of things, how things were last year, like you had this, uh, like this nice code generation flow that Haishan talked about uh, this morning and Karen too. And then if you had your own backend, because this only worked for NVIDIA, so if you had your own backend, you had to um, just fork it and replicate the entire thing and modify you you p the pieces you care about. And you had to do this for every single backend you wanted to develop. Um, so this wasn't exactly great and scalable. Uh, so one thing that we did over the past year that I'm very happy and proud of is that we re-architecture Triton to be more of an infrastructure to write GPU compiler rather than like a compiler in and of itself. So now I think the, the way I think of Triton now is more like you have this set of building blocks, uh, like you have this front end that people can use. Uh, and we have a plugin interface that allows uh, backends to hook into the front end. Uh, and use their own set of passes and so on. Uh, we also have this Triton IR and Triton GPIR dialects that were mentioned before, and they come with a set of passes and conversions uh, to and from other dialects. Uh, and now, if you want to write uh, your own backend, uh, it's much better because you just have to implement the particular plugin interface that we've defined, um, and you can implement passes and extensions uh, for the Triton IR and Triton GPIR dialects. Um, and if you have your own custom IRs, you can also do that in your own third-party directory. And then you're sort of just going to use uh, the core buildings block that we provide. So this is much more scalable because uh, now you don't have to replicate the whole thing. And uh, hopefully, you can share way more code than you could a year ago. Um, one thing that's still not great, and I'm going to talk about it more in terms of what we want to do for the next year, is um, Triton GPIR, due to the way it works, um, is often incompatible with many third-party hardware. So what happens in practice is people can reuse Triton IR, but often they have to fork Triton GPIR unless they're in tree. And, and in that case, we can define the extensions in tree. Um, another thing I'm super, super pumped about. Uh, so last year, uh, last year I really complained about a bunch of things. Another thing I complained about um, was like performance not always being uh, as good as we wanted. Uh, so this is uh, where we were last year. Like you saw, if your matrix publications were really, really large, um, but your reduction dimension was small, then you got like really, really bad performance because Triton has a good inner loop, had a good inner loop, but everything that was not an inner loop uh, took a massive amount of time. Um, and today we did a lot of work on that, and there's actually going to be a talk about this very topic uh, by Pavel uh, in the backend section, and we've managed to fix that. Uh, so that now we have like just very, very good performance across the board. Um, in fact, faster than Kublas uh, for this particular case, which surprised us um, because we're not really aiming uh, to, to be like the fastest possible. Um, uh, the, the one caveat is it requires like modifying the kernel source code. So you cannot just take a, a nice A100 matmol and running on H100 and expect this kind of performance. Um, another thing I really like is tooling. So uh, Karen talked a lot about tooling this morning, so I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, but now we have a nice interpreter that can help you uh, write your own kernels. And we also have a profiler that can help you like profile the, the, the runtime took by these kernels. And, and I think the, the reason why like uh, I didn't push that hard to, to mention that I write a lot of kernels at OpenAI, uh, but I think the reason why I think it's important to mention is uh, because these are really tools that have helped uh, very significantly accelerate um, my own productivity as a Triton user at OpenAI. Uh, there's bugs that would have taken me like weeks to debug before, and now I can just set a breakpoint in like my attention kernel and look at the tensors and figure I have an algorithm bug somewhere, and it's great. Uh, I spend an afternoon on it instead. Um, and Proton is also good because I think it it allowed us to write much much better regression testing. Because then you can, for example, you can imagine like defining a neural network forward pass, um, and then 
running it through Proton, and then you can see the breakdown of all the kernels that ran and the runtime. And then you can just compare that again a against a reference to see if you've decreased performance in CI. And that's pretty good and pretty well integrated. Um, another thing I was like super unhappy about last year is code complexity. Um, so uh, so the, the total number of lines of code, uh, there was like this very, very big bump that you can see between two 2023 and 2024. Um, and this was like a very steep slope uh, for a single year. Uh, and this didn't really bode, ways, bode well for how Triton would scale. Uh, so what we've done uh, is we've tried to make the code base more modular so that different parts could uh, reuse more components and could be developed on the independently. So this has led to like a substantial, like there's a very big dip in total lines of code and, and backend lines of code. Um, and this dip has been like moved to like third party uh, backends that can be developed pretty independently from, from core infrastructure. Um, and finally, the, I think the community also like has been like uh, getting bigger and bigger as we can see in this very, very big room uh, today which by the way, I'm super grateful and, and thank a lot to Meta for organizing that. It's crazy and surreal to see like so many people um, attending this event. Uh, but yeah, the number of developers has grown a lot and it's, um, yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, and, and the plot I forgot to mention, but it's the number of active contributors over the 60 days rolling window. Uh, in terms of what will happen uh, next year, um, so I, I mentioned how the portability story was like not too great because Triton GPIR is still very um, in tree specific. So it started very NVIDIA specific. Then we put like AMD in tree and now it's NVIDIA and AMD specific. And so if, if other people want to develop their own backend, they sort of have to fork the whole dialect and modify components of it. And then rebasing against uh, the main branch is, is a giant nightmare. Um, so we, we have like um, one solution to that, which is linear layouts. So linear layouts are a new framework that we've developed, um, that we've been developing. It was uh, suggested by uh, an amazing colleague of mine at OpenAI called Adam Goucher, who's in the audience, and I'm very grateful. Um, and it's, uh, he's also a Triton power user. Um, and uh, yeah, essentially the goal is to have a single interface for all the layouts that we've seen in the wild. Uh, over the past few years working on Triton. And so this way, if people want to um, develop their own backend, they can reuse our entire layout engine uh, for Triton GPU and not have to worry about like swizzling data and, and like how like how we're going to convert layouts when we should uncover them and so on. Um, another big thing that I think will be super important moving forward for portability is structured memory accesses. Um, so I, I mentioned the the performance graph that I showed at the beginning showing very good hopper performance. It uses uh, an experimental language feature uh, for, for like hopper uh, called like TMAs for tensor memory accelerator. And it's great, it's fast, but if you try to run it on a 100, it just won't run. Uh, and, and this is kind of a problem in, in the world of like more hardware hetero heterogeneity even within a single vendor is we don't want to duplicate our kernels. And obviously for other vendors like uh, Intel and so on, uh, structured memory accesses are also very important. And if we don't have a core abstraction for them, then uh, it means it will become more painful to, to create a third party backend. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty worried about like fragmentation of our kernels uh, between using the TMAs and not using TMAs. So I'm, I'm sort of hoping we can do something about it over, over the next year. Um, on performance, uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I cheated a little bit earlier because I showed you a single matrix multiplication kernel, but in the real world, uh, things are not simple matrix multiplications. Um, and, and Triton has a very big problem, which is performance cliffs. So you can write a Triton kernel, then you can add like an instruction and you'll see like the performance of your kernel like dropping by, I don't know, like 20% at best. Sometimes it can drop by much more. There's like pretty fundamental reasons for that. Uh, one is just register spilling has always been an issue. Like if your block size becomes too big and cannot fit in the register um, space, uh, that, that, that will just uh, lead to terrible performance. Another reason is uh, software pipelining is becoming more and more context. And as we push more and more magic in the compiler, 
uh, we have bigger and bigger cliffs. Uh, and you also even have cascades, which is that if you're missing the first optimizations that the compiler is doing, like if it cannot prove alignment, then then basically like it cannot pipeline, and, and you're you're going to have synchronization in your loop, and it cannot use the latest tensor core sometimes. It's just going to be really bad. So we have these very bad cliffs that I think we need to do something about. Um, I don't know exactly what we can do <laughs> about it, but we'll work on it. Um, and um, another um, thing that that Triton can lead to, like cliff in Triton performance, is unnecessary shunning run trips. Uh, so Triton, when you write a Triton kernel, it doesn't really tell you like uh, how the data is partitioned between uh, different resources on your GPU, be it like uh, registers of threads or shared memory and so on. Um, and like it means it's up to the compiler to decide for each variable uh, what its layout is. And sometimes like it needs to convert layout to keep things correct and consistent. And um, this can lead to like very bad performance. So if you look at tl.sort, which by the way, tl.sort is a very nice piece of code uh, that Adam, I mentioned earlier, also wrote. Uh, full credit to him, but um, a year ago, I didn't even know we could sort in Triton, and it turns out that you can without a uh, custom instruction, but it's not very efficient uh, yet. And we think linear layout might be able to help there, to help the, the compiler do a better job at figuring out which layout should be used when. Um, and finally, another thing I mentioned is um, if you want to use like the latest NVIDIA hardware as efficiently as possible, um, you, you need to use a technique called war socialization, uh, which is very incompatible with the uh, with the Triton program model. Um, I, I, like I'm sure Adam will talk more about it in his Mosaic GPU talk. But if you want to do things like tri like Flash and Triton 3, uh, then you need uh, techniques like that. And we haven't quite sorted out how th this uh, this will be handled by the compiler. Um, yeah, and tooling. Also things that were like mentioned um, briefly by Karen earlier, but I think one thing very important for next year, um, and that won't take care of cliffs entirely, but at least that, that, will, that will help uh, developers um, do something about them, is um, the compiler knows usually when it cannot do a good job. It's like, well, I cannot prove alignment on this variable. It would be good if it let the user know. Um, so then the user can like try to like at least work around it by forcing, uh, telling the compiler the alignment of this variable is, is like 16 or something. Um, another thing that would be very good is runtime sanitizers. Um, so as a Triton user, it's very annoying to me when I have like an integer overflow, for example, and, and, and I, I don't know where it comes from, and, and there's no way to tell, and it, sometimes you get like an illegal address because you, you read out of bounds in memory. Uh, the other day, I got like an invalid instruction because I was overwriting like the the instruction memory, which is like very confusing. Uh, so if we had like some sanitizers for undefined behavior and 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 memory accesses, that that would be also good. And and we're working on this. Um, and finally, I think that there's like um, one place where we could make our our code complexity lower, and we have a big uh, software pipeliner. Um, coming up, which is uh, going to be a collaboration w between OpenAI and, and Meta. And, and, and the goal here is really to be able to have more uh, software pipelining schedules without duplicating our entire software pipelining infrastructure. Um, so for example, if you want to do like flash attention, you might need a new, a new schedule and you might not want to reuse the matrix modification one. Um, yeah, and finally, uh, one note about community is I know like the core developers don't do the best job at supporting Triton users. Uh, we don't really have a ton of bandwidth because we're just so hands-on on, on uh, feature development. Um, so if you see that we have a Slack, but it's mostly empty because a lot of the communication is happening in private channels uh, that we have wi with partners. Uh, we typically review the pull requests, but our bar is pretty high. Um, yeah, so just one tiny call to action while I have you all here, but I think it would be uh, really great if like the users of Triton could like help each other out and try to, to nurture like a, a community that, that would be like self-sustainable. Uh, so I encourage you to join the, the CUDA mode Discord um, if you're not on there already. They have a Triton channel that you can use uh, to, to ask questions and get other people of the in the community answer you. Uh, and also we encourage people to submit PRs that uh, improve documentation. Uh, it's something that we haven't had like a lot of times to do, but we always welcome like uh, very big improvements in documentation. Um, 
yeah, so I want to thank you all again for being here. It's very, very surreal for me to stand here in front of so many people.